Every good cook should know how to make a respectable pastry crust dough. That's for pies and quiches and tarts. And I think in the old way, when you did it all by hand, your hands were hot and it took a long time and the pastry got sticky and it turned out like cardboard. But I think if you use one of these machines, and this method, it's going to work out very well. The first thing is measuring the flour. I have, this is all-purpose flour, and if you use unbleached flour, you're going to have a tenderer crust. There's one cup, and notice how I measure, and I'm dipping the cup into the flour, sweeping it off level. These are dry measure cups. These are very important because you want to get your measurements accurate. So there's three cups of all-purpose flour. Now here's another thing for tenderness, which is cake flour. That's plain bleached cake flour. I want one cup half cup of that because that's a soft flour and that's going to make for a tenderer crust and now we have a very important thing is chilled butter two and a half sticks ten ounces of chilled butter cut into small pieces and I have four tablespoons of chilled white vegetable sort and that is again for tenderness half, half a teaspoon of salt and a big pinch, that's about an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar, and that will help brown the crust. And then on goes the machine, top. And you just want to mix the flour and butter together with little pulses. That was six pulses. And now we have the water, and this is going to be, I'm going to start with two thirds cup of ice water. And again, I'm going to pulse it in. Come, 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 come. There's one third cup, two thirds cup. Now take a look at it. I just want it to. I don't want. I just want it to begin to mass. I don't want it to form a ball. That's about three more tablespoons of water. And now out it comes. And this is going to be the part that's called the great smear. See, that's very rough looking now, but if I hold it in my fist, it holds together. And that looks very sort of rough and weird. That's just the way I want it. So I press it together with my hand, and now with the heel of my hand, not the palm, because the heel is not hot, I push it out into a six inch smear. And this acts as the final blending and flour and then gather this together in a pink and then it must kind of rehydrate itself and rest for at least two hours before you form it. And that's going to be chilled in the refrigerator wrapped in plastic. Tonight I'm going to have a perfectly beautiful glittering and fresh apple tart for dessert. And I have this lovely buttery dough that I made yesterday, chilling in the refrigerator and it's all ready to go. It's necessary to chill it because it relaxes it. And also if it's, if it's too soft, you can't work with it. If it's too hard, you can't either. So I'm going to beat it into submission. into a circle because I'm going to make a round tart. Then there's a little bit of flour and sprinkle that very lightly on the bottom and on the on the rolling surface and on the dough. Because you don't want the dough to stick and you don't want to add too much flour because you'll dry out the dough. You lose just enough to keep it from sticking. Now I'll start rolling and then keep turning the dough making sure that it's not going to stick on the bottom. And then turning prevents it prevents you from allowing it to stick because if it started sticking you'd never get anywhere. And now notice here I'm starting not at the edge. But I'm leaving about an inch and then I'm rolling not quite to the edge because you want to have an even thickness all around. And you want to roll as quickly as you can because if the dough softens you've had it. You can't do anything with it. And if it begins to soften 
immediately refrigerate it for 20 minutes and then continue. Also, please notice this rolling pin. It's about a rolling surface of 18 inches long. If you have a little something like this, you're just never going to succeed at all. It would be better to use a broom handle than a silly little pin like that. I'm just sprinkling a tiny bit of flour on there just to make sure nothing sticks. This is a less than an eighth of an inch thick and I think this is just about right. I'm going to form it in this pan here, which is buttered, and I want it to be about an inch larger all around, so I have my crusty pizza pan, which I will use as a template. I'm just going to cut that all around, and I have some nice scraps of, of dough here, which I can use to make appetizers out of or something else. Here we are. Now here's how to get the dough into the pan. Fold it in half, then fold it in a quarter, and then put the point of that in the center of the pan so that when you unfold it, it'll be nicely centered. Now, I want the sides here to be thick enough so that they will hold up during baking. So I'm, so I'm taking a little bit of dough and I'm, I'm taking the dough and I'm pushing it down against the sides and that makes them thicker. I do that all around. You know that's, as you can see, that's a kind of a ruffled interior, which is just fine. I'm just gonna take my pin and roll over that and it roll off any excess. And I'm gonna even it out by pressing it against the sides and also that raises it up so I can get a little bit higher. Now this isn't really necessary, but it's kind of nice just to make a little decorative edge there with the back of a knife. Now this is a very important step. I'm pricking the bottom of the pastry with the tines of a table fork, and that will help prevent the bottom from rising, it would be awful to have it balloon up. If I bake this shell immediately, it could very well bake out of shape. It, the dough needs to relax, and the best way to do that is to chill it for half an hour. Or if I didn't want it right away, I could wrap and freeze it. Now that shell has nicely chilled and rested, and you'd think that it would be about time for me to bake the tart, but it's not yet ready. This is in the interest of having a crisp crust it has to be pre-baked, but if I pre-bake it empty and naked, the sides are going to fall and the top bottom is going to puff up. So the solution is to take a piece of buttered foil and very gently press that in against the edges. And then it has to be weighted down, so I have this collection of dried beans which I've had for about 15 years. Press them against the sides and then you pre-bake it. It's going into a 450 oven for 10 minutes. There we are, that's all ready. As you can see, the bottom has set, so it's not gonna be soggy. After 10 minutes, I took out the foil and beans. I can now use them again for the next tart. And then I pricked it again and left it in for two more minutes. And now this is being an apple tart, I wanna give a little flavor to the bottom of the shell and the apples, and this is one cup of apricot jam that was pushed through a sieve and then boiled down until it was rather thick like this with two tablespoons of sugar. You have to use this while it's still warm. There'd be no French pastry without apricot glaze, that's for sure. Now to the apples. You want apples that'll hold their shape, like Granny Smith's or Golden's. I happen to be using Granny Smith's here. Now we want to cut it so that all the slices stay together. So I'm making very careful slices down there. The length of the apple. These are apples that are peeled and cored, as you see. I forgot to tell you that. Now, now these are, I want to cut it into a slightly wedge shape so it's going to fit into the tart, looking like an apple half. There, so I just cut a little bit off the side. 
Now I'm going to spread it out. You just take your hand and spread it out like that. And lift it up, and, and it goes to the car. Isn't that neat? So I have these little leftover pieces where I made the wedges. We're just going to put these in the interstices. A bit in the middle. Now we want to sprinkle that with a little bit of sugar. I've got maybe two tablespoons there. It depends on your apples. And that's now ready to bake. Now this goes into a 450 degree oven for 20 minutes. Then you turn it down to 400 and bake it 20 minutes more just until the apples are tender. Here's our beautiful apple tart all baked and I'm making it glitter with this same apricot glaze. Here's another idea, a fresh strawberry tart, nicely glazed. Or for high tea, little barquettes filled with fresh fruits. Or how about some little appetizers, little baby quiches. And all of these beautiful things made out of the same pastry dough.